This is Anthony with MakeWeirdMusic.com, and we are in the rehearsal space of Jan Serfeld of Panzer Ballet, um, and we want to talk today about tuplets, because Jan is a bit of a specialist in tuplets. So Jan, for people who um, have no background in music theory, can you tell us some basics about tuplets? Of course. Well, basically, um, tuplets means that you have a different amount of notes above other notes. Like if you have two notes and instead of that you play in the equal space, you play three notes, then you have triplets. Mm -hmm. If you play in the same place, you play five notes, you have quintuplets. And so they are evenly dispersed. Mm -hmm six tuplets or septuplets. Um, so the most common thing is for every musician is learning triplets. Um, and this is already, I think this is already a step. I remember learning triplets. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's not this, not as easy for, for everyone. Um, but in the end, I think most musicians really get it. Mm -hmm. And on triplets, there is so much based on triplets, so many musical styles. You have uh, shuffle, you have the blues. Swing. Oh, swing. Yeah. Um, you have um, uh, the polka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so now you have, um, there's a lot, and, and then there is um, there are, how do you say, we say um, donkey bridge. <laughs> if you have some syllables to help you oh, oh, pronounce, yeah, yeah, yeah. pronounce it. Well, I learned with, uh, well, triple it, triple it, triple, triple it, triple, triple it. it. But then for uh, quintuplets, yeah. It was hippopotamus. Oh, okay. Hippopotamus, 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 hippopotamus. Okay. In in German we have ficke die Titte. <laughs> <laughs> it's censored, uh, uh -huh. but uh, it's it's. I think it's the best example. The Indians ha uh, have um, like the the takatina, mm -hmm. the the, the mm -hmm. conical stuff, and takatina, the takatina, the takatina, the takatina. I think it's the Indian way is. Um, Yeah, it's it's maybe the most effective way to to pronounce uh, syllables like music musical rhythm, and uh, it's the most direct way to to actually to to get close to rhythm. Is, mm -hmm. is this uh, conical um, thing the Indians do? Uh, in in German, you you count like. <laughs> you just get tired your jaw gets like numb right and 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 i think yeah so um yeah so and and um i think the same way as as a kid i learned triplets mm -hmm. the sa same thing applied to one day to quintuplets mm -hmm. and also to septuplets and um, I think it's um, in, the, in the beginning as everything in the be beginning that's unusual is hard to do but um, it's actually the step is not that far as you might think you just have to repeat doing it mm -hmm. uh, the step from like triplets from like from eighth notes to triplets is um, not bigger, not much bigger than the step from like 16th notes to quintuplets. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of a lot of composers or a lot of songs that I played, you know, in jazz band or something yeah. like that, will have a phrase with triplets or a phrase with quintuplets. Um, but you've kind of explored a whole new world of possibilities. So can you talk about for Panzer Ballet, where did you start 
And then how did you get into this world of living in quintuplets and septuplets? <laughs> well, the start was um, when when uh, there was it was two thousand nine. Um, I wrote this arrangement of. Um, of time of my life and there was this one part the dirty dancing song uh, the dirty dancing th song yeah yeah and i don't remember uh if it even maybe was sebastian who came up with the idea um i just had really something quite simple uh just after the saxophone solo just uh, like something a break or something and, and it was kind of simple in comparison to what sebastian came up after that it was a great idea, so it was, uh, let me perform it for you. we have um, the groups we, we perform quintuplets and the groups are getting smaller we perform like like five, uh, groups of five quintuplets then of four quintuplets and then of three quintuplets which uh, causes a polyrhythm you call it like five against four and then five against three meaning like five against four what means that it means every fourth quintuplet you have figures of every, like, groupings of every fourth quintuplet. And uh, five against three means every third quintuplet. Like, you, uh, x against y is mm -hmm. means every um, yth division of the beat by x. Mm. You can say this, this is the donkey bridge. So... <laughs> so in the hippopotamus, you're yeah, doing, right. like, hippopa, hippopa, hippopa over hippopotamus <laughs> right okay so you're just subdividing the quintuplets into groups right and then building phrases on top of those yeah and you have the hippopotamus but you have hippopo hippopotamus uh, hippopo uh, what is Hippopa? it again? i don't know hippopotamus no hippopotamus hippopotamus uh-huh Hippopotamus, hippopotamus, hippopotamus. Hippopot ah. That's every third one. So, yeah, so you're building yeah. accents. Accents. You're using accents on exactly. every X or every Y quintuplets. Right, okay. exactly. Uh, if you. Let me. Sh yeah, maybe a dry example. It's like the grouping of five. Would be takitina ta takitina ta takitina ta takitina ta takitina ta takitina ta. If you group it in those quintuplets in four, it's like takitina 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 And three would be takitina 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 takitina. Oh no, takitina takitina. Yeah. So every yes, five takatis, yeah. it ends up back on the one, right? Something like exactly. that. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, and then uh, this was kind of the start. Like it, it took us very long as to really nail this down as a band. Um, and to really learn like uh, yeah, these groupings because they sound so unusual. Um, and then um, after like we after much of practice, we uh, I think it was Alexander who mentioned uh, well 
why don't we do a whole song of quintuplets? This, this would be this would be a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, whole song with this stuff. I mean, this must be very hard to, to accomplish. And I didn't even know. I didn't have any example of it. Um, of quintuplet based songs so and I didn't know where to start so I chose to to, uh, to rearrange something that is very known and already very dense and 16th note based that I rewrote in quintuplets it was uh, some skunk funk mm -hmm. by the Brecker brothers um, uh, but yeah I will show show you the example but before this I would like to show you some other examples that are maybe a little bit easier to get. Mm -hmm. uh, after some skunk funk, uh, I, I wrote this track Euroblast, uh, the first original track with quintuplets, and it's uh, it has uh, some easier to grasp stuff going on. And um, the example, let me show you first the first riff of Euroblast. Okay, so now we here we have the duck 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 go duck 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 duck. This is the main riff, and then in the end, it again has this four against five. Taketina 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 taketina. Then I have I got another idea. What else could I do? And it was like. Chain, not having, not doing this constant groupings like always four notes. Uh, what if I if I change the groupings of notes so it doesn't have a po necessarily a polyrhythm inside of it, but just a f fucked up rhythm, <laughs> whatever. Uh, so um, and then I I wrote the following riff. I'll show you. <laughs> Okay, so now here we have uh, six, five, four, and three following onto each other, and then expanding again. And it's um, yeah, this was another big challenge. But uh, the more of different combinations you try, the more you will you will get um, to feel the subdivisions. The, the, there are many possibilities to, uh, and. Well, the polyrhythm is maybe a great start, but but then you have to find the, you cannot always play polyrhythm. So um, to get it's it's just a, a tool to to get some nice ideas and and well before you go further yeah this is all fine and good for a guy playing in a rehearsal space right like 
if you're an individual just studying, it's one thing. But to yeah. get a whole band to play this yeah. stuff, yeah. How do you get five guys to all be playing in time in quintuplets when there are different people playing different subdivisions? What's the practice process like? And since you all don't live in the same city, how did you learn the pieces before coming together? Yeah, so it was in the beginning, like the first thing, the skunk funk, it took us very long. Uh, so the first thing is I do this pre-production with um, everyone gets like the MIDI file and I play some guitars to it but so you get it, it sounds kind of nice to practice to but uh, basically it's to like MIDI drums and mm -hmm. um, everyone practices his part and um, the thing is only if you if if you meet first for the first time and there is not a MIDI file playing back but other others who have practiced to mm -hmm. maybe to the same MIDI file which is really nailing it down but if not everyone f like is nailing it down from himself right. then you have kind of this not yet together it's like it's not glued together yet you have it's yeah. just like a loose uh, construct uh, right. The heads are not sync in sync yet, so and we we had to. Uh, um, you don't have like a um, how do you say um, s something to really rely on to because not uh, it's still a little bit shaky. Right. You're, um, well, you're everyone has a, like a different maybe perception of uh, one is slightly before it, uh, the other one slightly behind it, and then the, it, it it sums up to something really shaky in the beginning. So we start started practicing really slow, and uh, we started uh, just it took us like a half a year of practice, practicing several times a month um, until we got through the head of skunk funk. And like we, I remember doing rehearsals of, of six hours just to play one part or something. Wow. And so uh, it's re and beginning really slow and looping one bar or two bars and then looping four bars. And then the other day we practice the next part. And one day we get together and practice the transition between the parts, which is another challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, when did yeah. it become music? <laughs> like it's one thing to play it technically correct, but then you've got to learn how to play it musically. It's there was not a not a moment when we said okay now it's music because it's gradually it uh -huh. started. Uh -huh. It started. My, I mean the rehearsal started. We started to play it, but uh, correctly. But life, it's something different. And right. uh, you kind of you, you you have to. Always the performance is only a maximum of 80% of what you actually can play. And it's always like you have a bad monitor situation. Yeah, so uh, it it was gradually and by just playing the head uh, is um, it's not improvisation yet. Right. right. So I think uh, the biggest step was when we got through the head and then started adding the improvisational parts when it started to yeah start you, you start listening in a different way to the music if you start improvising on it mm -hmm. and you have to get even deeper into it to be able to accomplish it so i think then it started after maybe two or three years like you could see the horizon okay now it could start to become really musical and um yeah, yet not not there yet after after eight years, but uh, I think it's it's got much better. <laughs> I remember you saying something about everyone was practicing to different clicks too, so you could get a sense of different feels, you know, for those um, groupings. But this was uh, yeah, this was uh, later on. With the septuplets. Oh, septuplets. That's right. <laughs> Something I will discuss we'll get later. later. We'll get okay. to the later. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but um, 
let me show you the uh, example uh, of of uh, skunk funk. Mm -hmm. um, this was like uh, the rearrangement of it was kind of trial and error thing uh, because um, it's based on the original. But I had to insert notes to um, to make it kind of you have now you have the original you have four four with 16th notes you have 16 notes in a bar so i wanted to yeah to make it similar as close as possible but to have it in the quintuplet field so you have to decide do you take a three four bar um with quintuplets which means you have 15 instead of 16 per bar or you choose like to say in four four then you but then you have 20 quintuplets okay. so you have to with 15 you have to cut off one somewhere and with 20 you have to add four notes somewhere and this was kind of the start how i rearranged this <laughs> Then I have another example. so on <laughs> all right so you should yeah you you decided to add notes to the melody it's some yeah in some places i added notes right yeah to fit 20 notes in the space of 16 yes. you've got to add notes right how do you maintain the integrity of the original melody that's if, a, if you're adding notes that's a good question i don't maintain the integrity but i i'm close to it it's just like uh in skunk funk which i did a, something i did in skunk funk like repeating repeating some uh some syllables like it's like repeating syllables in a sentence uh, if you say um like make merry kaka great again something like this yeah you, you don't have in the original of of skunk funk you have da -ba -da -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da. Right. And then with quintuplets, you have, I have right. make a merry kaka great egg again. <laughs> That's one tool. Right. <laughs> All right. So you guys lived in quintup quintuplets for quite some time. Yeah. And then you decided to move on. Right. <laughs> yes. Not move on as in leave, but to add yes to your capabilities yes it was um i think yeah six years later six years later uh it was like not not it was still very hard the quintuplet thing but as soon as it gets somehow manageable it's already feels like it's too easy to to <laughs> it has to be the challenge you have to be on the limit you, you know like right. you have to explore to, to 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 you have to reach out to the limits to to get further so yeah next step was septuplets and um i chose to 
um, add a part in my arrangement of the typewriter, which is um, the typewriter. I called it the typewriter two, and then there was this a uh, middle part, uh, and I chose to really do this in sub septuplet feel. Uh, but I already like the tools to learn this feeling this new rhythmic feeling I already had this with quintuplets so I tried the same with septuplets first groupings of three notes of four notes what happens um, and I immediately started with trying to improvise on it so but um, then um, I, I thought well uh, with septuplets you, you have like seven notes that pass between two clicks and I thought well um, that's too many notes I need a click somewhere in between but seven is I mean dividing by two that's 3.5 right you mm -hmm. don't have like there is no you'd be in between two septuplets uh, yeah right right so I, I chose to, to uh, practice to a click like this and then gradually um, making it faster yeah and then trying the groupings over it and so on so I practiced this for a year uh, and after that I mean in about that was the time when uh, we started to rehearse be able to rehearse the whole thing as a band and then it turned out that this click the others didn't practice to this click they practiced to something else I don't know but uh, the majority was against practicing to this click uh -huh. uh, um, so we, cho uh, we chose a, a different click So um, when I noticed, well, I changed. Then I changed the click to to make it easier for the band who managed to play better over the other click. Mm -hmm. But for myself, having practiced so long to this to this uh, odd click, uh, I totally like. I didn't get it in the first time. <laughs> I had to learn it new again, like practice f from almost from scratch but after that i was even more secure with with, with right. uh, more improvising. tools more tools yeah, yeah the more tools you you use the more different uh the more um combination of uh putting the stones in your way the right. better you, you you'll manage to get over the stones and um so you were practicing yeah. what is that uh four plus three Four plus three, yeah. Were they practicing three plus four or something? No, they were practicing... Um, it was actually an, an eighth note click. Uh -huh. um, like seven eighth, but with one... In the with one uh, um, like one, soft three, click in five, the seven, one, two, three, one, three, five. Do, 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 Oh, okay. 
Two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the six, end seven, of four. Two, three, four. Yeah, like. The end of four in septuplets. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's like really you have between four and five, you have in the middle between four and five, you have to find this one. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, oh. two, three, four, five, it's six. The seven. E. Like four, four E and uh, yes. right? it's the E. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Four E. Yeah. Of a septuplet. Sheesh. Yeah, it's it, you can practice this in different ways. You can e either focus, of course, on the eighth notes or focus on the sixteenth notes, mm -hmm. and it's a different feeling, of course. Right. Uh, if if you practice with the eighth note, eighth notes, maybe you get more calm over it, mm -hmm. kind of. But the tiny little ways in between the 16th notes right. to, uh, to focus on the 16th notes is better so i think both ways right. should be practiced so how about tempos because oh the yeah the faster you go the harder it is to discern exactly septuplets right basically um there is i i recently saw a video there is like a limit to how fast time between two notes can pass mm -hmm. um, there's a limit to it uh, so that you perceive it as not bullshit <laughs> <laughs> so to perceive it as music right so that that means if there is this limit uh, it means that if you have like septuplets uh, more you, you have to ch basically you have to choose a slower tempo than with quintuplets or uh, or with sixteenth notes. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, uh, you of course you, you you if you reach the limit with sixteenth notes, you cannot put inside septuplets anymore. Right. And um, well, I think. This sets a limitation to if you, if you put in like, which I haven't done yet, like eleven or thirteen, it has to get even slower uh, to to make it kind of to, to that you f for you to feel the difference between uh, seven and nine uh, uh, from a certain tempo on that you don't hear any difference. It's just. <laughs> So what's next in this world of tuplets for you? Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's not, the, the septuplets are not through yet, mm -hmm. but um, we already tried some nine, mm -hmm. nine, uh, six, yeah, fast nine eighth uh, right. uh, grooves, which is almost like, if you have a fast nine, Nine eighth groove. It's almost like a slow nine sixteenth groove, mm -hmm. uh, something like this. But uh, well, let's see. And the uh, band, the band digs it. 
they're cool with it? I mean, totally. All right. Uh, maybe, maybe, yeah. The the nine, the nine. You will hear not more nine from us. You hear, can hear it on the Shunyai of Breaking Rain. You can hear the nine already. Yeah. But on the next album, we have some more nine. Oh, awesome. And the next one, 11, but that's still in the future. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you so much for giving us a great rundown of triplets. Oh, I'm sorry, of tuplets. Tuplets, yeah. And all the examples. That's awesome. You're very welcome. <laughs>